party time. Now, this is the gang that emerge and approaches uh, Steven. You see, they, can, they, they, look, they look like real thugs. They're walking up and approach. Now, you can tell from the haircuts that this was uh, the 90s. <laughs> but if, 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 if you look, if you watch television these days, a lot of people are going back to that look. I wouldn't, but a lot of people are going back to, the, to that 90s uh, uh, haircuts like this from the 90s and this type of thing and that. And this is what some of the gang members say. Hey, you're in the wrong street. Hey, butt face. We want your money, butt face. You know, just normal thing that some of them throws in a short, sweet, to the point. Let's put it that way. And they responded. Uh, Rick says, you want me? You stupid ass, you stupid jackasses. Come on, homo boys. So he, he called them that to, to, to insult them. Because they're not homo boys, but that, that insult insulted them because they were uh, they thug, they, 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 they want to be tough. So they pull out their knives. Now you got a total of four of them. At this moment, you can see the back of Steven's head, and you see right here where his matlock sort of just floats up above him, and he's looking down. And like a flash of lightning, three of them get the head cut off that fast. And the hit and, and the the action was so fast until the body still stands there while Steven is taking the uh, sword standing in his hand. And you can see uh, the demon still floating above while the fourth gang member runs away and screams. Screaming for his life like if he runs away. And then the three bodies fell, fell, fell down to, to the ground under the street light. The medlock returned to uh, Steven's shoulder. At this point, they need to get away from that, that particular scene because the body could be discovered. So, Medlock uh, encouraged uh, Stephen to get a room at a sleazy motel. So, he approached, paid for the room, and went to his room after he got his key. He walked in, it's the lights off, it's sort of a, a dark shot, it's just a shadowy figure as he opened the door. See the bed, the light, and boom, he cut the lights on, and he hanged his uh, coat on the coat rack, and, and at, at that point you can see his sword being exposed when he got it on his back. Then he sits down on the bed, and that's when Medlock starts to, to talk to him. And he's asking Medlock why they're in the 50 plays, where they're waiting for. He sees, at this, at this particular point, Stephen is anxious. He wants to kill Vox with the coin. And, and so he, they tell him, we'll have to go back to the neither world. And Medlock is, uh, he already knows that Amy's in the process of doing that. He's just waiting to hear word from her. And you have talk shot them them talking and as we come back, you can see uh, elsewhere at that moment, you see uh, Jill and uh, Vox leaving the result. She's angry, she's not speaking to him. And then that's when she tells him she want to leave it. He said, fine. And that's when she gets angry and says, just like that. And he said, if you if you believe what those people said about, about me, then you really don't want, you really don't know me. And why should we why we should be together if you if not go, if you're gonna believe a total stranger over your husband? And that's when they a little bit more 
he slams on Brayton Miller role and she starts to cry a little bit and you know, I get, I get, I get really arrogant and and they hug and they draw one. A week later, back in the city. Now, in this shot, he's at his office and his publishing company. Because uh, after he rejects her, let's go back real quick. And when she could not deceive him, he spoke the truth. And energy came from his hand in this particular scene right here and sent her back into the void. Now she done failed. Her, her test is over. She's dead. But she, she, well, she's not really dead. She's basically sent back to the nether world. And that's basically what took place right there. She's been sent back to the nether world after she failed. She could not deceive him with turning into these women. So she was sent back into the nether world. And that's what uh, Medlock in this particular scene, scene was uh, explaining to uh, Stephen. That she demon had failed, and now it was left up to them. That's when you go, go, go to the other scene, and as, as, as they leave the uh, the Log Cabin Park Resort, and they head back home, and they decided to separate for a while. That's when he's back in the city and in his office. But like I said, uh, the story boy doesn't is not it's accurate. Because uh, when I revived my screenplay, I added more elements into the story. And this is him in his office, working. His mind is filled with a lot of turmoil at the moment. He knows something's about to happen. He sort of got a suit on too. And across town, back in the motel, Medlock finally says, Time. It's, it's time, but he's, Stephen is impatient. He said it's been a week. And Medlock is wide awake, and he says it's time. Then you get a, a shot of an angle shot of the a camera looking up towards the building. You see the, the window there, and it goes back to box on the corner. And the secretary. Uh, calls him and say that someone wants to see him and he said who and at that moment a uh, voice uh, blasted on the, uh, the intercom and said I see you gatekeeper and now his box knows what's about to take place now and they enter his office the door is closed box sends the secretary away and that's when box for the first time he gets to meet Misled gatekeeper and the demon that sits on my encounter shoulders. And they meet face to face to confront one another. And this is how Vox sees Stephen. And that's when he takes a swing in with his sword. Now, Vox uh, himself is also pretty handy with his sword. He, he keeps an antique sword in his office, so. And. Vox is cheering, I mean right here you see uh, Medlock is cheering, uh, cheering uh, Stephen Powell on to kill him quickly and get over with and, and don't play with him. So Vox goes over to his uh, office uh, wall and, and, and takes his uh, sword down and now they are, now he's armed and they start face to face and they start to fight and kick him in the face and the story progresses and the fight gets intense. His words said back and forth. And Stephen asked him, uh, if you join us, you'd be a lot better you'd be a lot better off and I won't have to kill you. And you see he says never. And that's when the fight continues. And in this particular scene where I got it written in the script, as the swords uh, clash you hear uh, demons in the background screaming and uh, talking out loud 
in the actual movie. Because you get the dark forces actually trying to get him to kill this guy. Because if they can stay in the land of the living, they'll, they will have the power to, to release the other demons. And that's why the light entity wanted Box to bring them back, to send them back. Now, Amy's already been defeated. And with a quick uh, slice of the blade, he slices uh, Stephen Powers on the side of the face and sort of messes him up real bad. And he tells him to come on. I'll just stand there. You want some? Come and get it. If not, put that sword down. And let the, the fight continue. And slice him up again across the, uh, the arm this time. And Stephen backhands him and knocks the sword from his head and knocks him across the table and to the floor. And he laughs. And he uses a racial comment. Time to die, Blackie. In this particular point, he starts to take off his uh his coat and gets kicked in the face. Then he kicks again on top of a glass table and shatters it. His face is really messed up this time. And then he wants to pretend that he's hurt. And then he just falls to the floor. Now he didn't kill uh, Stephen because he's still in the form. He's still in the place where he can repent if he wants to. The real one he wants is. Medlock. Now Medlock is sitting there totally stunned. He can't believe that Stephen actually actually failed. He sits on the desk, looking bewildered. And that's when Box takes one swing and sends Medlock back into the new world. Uh, this is this is where the, the story board ends, but the script doesn't end there. The actual script ends in another place. We'll go to. So in the script, I get it broke down. You see, uh, the gatekeeper, chapter three, she damaged deception. That's that's on pages uh third thing to twenty. And like I was saying, when I wrote this, I wanted to just break it down to the point to where, to where when I was doing the storyboard and the script at the same time, I wanted to get as close as possible. But when I start, but when I did the revised version in two thousand eight. The, the screenplay was actually uh, lengthened. So you see, I probably had to add some more storyboard to it in order to get it more accurate and caught up with the uh, screenplay. Now this is uh, She Demon Hill. Uh, she, she, she had uh, quite a few lines in the story, and here she's saying, uh, if you can read that, it says, she Damon then hatefully said, What is truth, gatekeeper? You know better than I am. You say that you live by truth, but you never told your wife that you slept with a prostitute. Is that truth, gatekeeper? That's when, uh, Vox on line uh, 82, he, he replies and says, I don't answer to you, demon, because the truth is not within you, only deception. And it continues and says, Amy, knowing that she was about to be defeated by Vox, tried one last des desperate deception toward him. Amy changed into Another, even more beautiful woman. She pressed about while showing Vox her new body. She was trying to 
tempt him so she could destroy him. Amen to she demon. If you want this body, come, take me now. I know you find me alluring. And it's a little hard to believe I actually wrote this stuff, you know. Because <laughs> now that I go back and look, 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 look at all these things that I wrote, I said, wow, did I write this? But the answer is yes, I did write it. And as you pretty much know, as we go back to the line I just read, uh, that's pretty much what she did with none. She turned into an even more beautiful woman, impressed about in the nude. She got sent back to the needle world. Now in the actual script. We'll go back and I'll go back and read that too. Well, this is uh, chapter four where it says Mankind is truly demon on pages uh, 20 to 25. Now, as we go back to where I was originally at, it says right here, then Vox, standing with his right hand pointed towards Amy, rebuked her. Vox loudly said with an echo, No, I deny you. Be gone. Uh, at that moment, at the moment that Vox, at that moment, at, the, at that very moment that Vox had his hand pointed towards Amy, lightning came from his hand and struck her in the chest. Amy screamed aloud as the lightning, which came from uh, Vox's hand, Sent her back into the land of the dead. There was a clap of thunder and a flash of lightning, and Amy, the she demon, was gone. In that instant, she demon lifted up her head and saw that she was again within the land, within the neither world. Immediately, the gatekeepers took her to her place of torment. Then the lightning and the thunder stopped and the door to the neither world closed. Vox lowered his right hand. He looked around and in that instant, he was back in the nightclub. It was, it was if nothing had happened. Vox stood there for a moment, thinking to himself. So you see, like I was saying earlier, I mean, this is the revised version. A lot more has been added to it. And at, at the time I'd done this uh, storyboard, uh, all that had been illustrated out. But I want to thank you for uh, watching this video about the gatekeeper. And if there's any producers out there who's probably interested in this particular story and these characters, you got my email address on my at my YouTube account. It's Easter177 at yahoo.com. And it's a very good script. I think the time is very, very well thought out. And the back of it, like I said, I got each character's profile. I got uh, both, both for the illustrated part and also written out. So each uh, character uh, would pretty much have a great profile.
and a, and a backstory to each one. Now this is a Fox Unicorn's uh, short profile. And it says he's a publisher of books and magazines. Almost overnight, Vox Unicorn's life is changed forever. When he is attacked, when he is attacked by demons from the netherworld, the demons discovered that Vox was chosen to become the netherworld's next gatekeeper. They plan to kill him before he learned of the powers he possessed. But a light entity showed Vox who he who he was and who he would become within a dream vision. But but Vox ignored the vision as just a dream and forgot about it. And down here show it gives you just a little piece that uh we have Vox Unicorn and Geo Unicorn have been married for seven years. Oh, uh, what's that? That song you're hearing right now is one of my uh, animation and just finished rendering. And that voice you hear is the uh, JavaScript robot voice that I put in in order to. Uh, Mark each uh, scene that I have to put a uh, voice behind. You can hear it, you can hear it soon. Clerk Clerk oh, perfect timing. Well, again, uh, thank you for listening. And uh, have a good day, a good night, or, or whenever you watch this. Peace. And see you when I see you. Well, the scene you're looking at is, uh, is policed. It's, part, it's, a, it's a shot that I, that I just uh, finished uh, animating and then rendered.